Hey everyone, my name is Deadly Slob with TGN, and today we have the final Mephisto leveling video. We're hitting level 85 today, so uh, get ready, it's happening now. So if you haven't already seen the last one or haven't seen any episode in the series, you can use the annotations on the top of this video or click this big green annotation on this screen right now and you'll be redirected. I recommend watching the entire series. It's an awesome uh, series and I, I can't believe it's over. So last video, we left Northern for the last time. We were in Storm Peaks, and now we're going into High Jaw Mountains. Uh, now we're doing the first quest where you mount up on this dragon called uh, As High Jaw Burns. That's the quest. And basically, you just, you know, tour High Jaw for the first time, because uh, for many people who haven't seen this content, this is the first time you've actually seen High Jaw since uh, the Caverns of Time. Um, so it tries to explain, you know, what you're actually trying to fight against what you're trying to prevent so you can see the entrance to the Firelands raid right there and uh, Deathwing actually summoned Ragnaros for the first time uh, so right now we're also doing a quest you know some of the beginning ones uh, level 80 to 81 doesn't take too much time at all um, the experience is amazing so if you're planning on sticking in Northrin to level 81 I recommend you don't do that uh, now, we also dropped our BOAs at this particular point. Now, after doing some research, uh, it, it seems that my BOAs did work from level 80 to 81. I, on the live stream, I was claiming that they didn't. Uh, but in the end, it really didn't make too much of a difference because, like I said, 80 to 81 is insanely quick. Um, and we're going to be flying through all these quests because 80 to 85 is one massive chunk of game. And we're going to be summing it up into 15 minutes. And I know it's very difficult, but for the essence of time and for your enjoyment, I really don't want to be making 45 minute long videos because I, I wouldn't even watch that, okay? Uh, so we're going to be moving on here uh, as fast as we possibly can, but at the same pace that you guys will know kind of what's going on here. Um, to give you guys some details on what spec we are, we are Affliction right now. It's going very well for leveling, lots of survivability, those drain lifes, you know, are epic, you know, you basically, it's hard to die. Uh, of course, you're going to get pretty low whenever you first enter high jaw because the gear difference between northern greens and high jaw greens is far in between. Uh, so don't be discouraged if you're doing the first couple quests in high jaw and you're like, what is going on? I'm just dying. Uh, that's natural, okay, because you just, it's meant for people with epics. Uh, that's what it's meant for. It's meant for people who are going through the entire place. Because whenever we got there on our level 85 or level 80s, it was regular difficulty. So you're definitely going to be the underdog if you don't have any uh, gear. Um, but you know what? You'll work your way through it and you'll have a full set before you leave High Jaw, which is the whole point of the zone. I basically uh, get yourself ready for a deep home uh, and uh, old them in Twilight Highlands. So there's the first day, uh, ding of the day, we're level 81 at the Druids of the Talon. Um, Druids of the Talon is one of the new factions that you need to align yourself with with the Molten uh, Front daily quest as well. Uh, so you need to do all of these dailies to unlock the new uh, questing area and uh, you get some really nice rewards from that. So I recommend if you did do Vashir, you come back to Hyjal, do the regrowth quest chain and then also get yourself into the Molten Front and uh, do some of those dailies because you can get the flame breaker title you can get the the, the flame word hippogriff you can get uh, Laria's locket that turns into a uh, druid of the flame for five minutes uh, it's a really awesome uh, quest chain and they did really well uh, I've completed it on my hunter and uh, you know what it wasn't as fun as Sunwell uh, just because it is personal progression I really loved the server progression aspect of Sunwell uh, but they did a good job, you know, transforming, forming Malfurion's uh, Assault Breach or whatever it's called, Malfurion's Front or whatever. Uh, it's slowly transferring into this massive tree. Uh, the only thing I really don't like at the end of the Molten Front is once you're done turning in everything for all the vendors and uh, unlocking Druids of the Talent and Shadow Wardens, there's no final quest. It's just it. The final quest is actually whenever you unlock one of the vendors and you have to kill uh, Laria or whatever her name is, um, Laria or whatever, to gain the locket of course which starts a long quest chain. Uh, but right now we're in Blackrock, killing the first boss and moving on <laughs> into the middle of Blackrock, killing another boss. Uh, the reason why I'm cutting through this really quick is because we're doing a lot of instances in this video and I really can't show everything. Uh, Big C does a lot of this stuff so I know he's level 82 or something like that, he just did Stone Core. Uh, so I believe he's done this instance, so if you want to see the entire playthrough, he's got a lot of great stuff uh, with a comedic value to it as well. So 
Um, all these zones have been done before, guys. You know, it may have been viable to do whenever Cataclysm first came out, but most of you guys have seen this content before, so we're just going to roll through it. Um, now, we do hit level 85 in this video, of course, and you're probably wondering what's next, Deadly. Um, well, number one is we're going to be making a warrior. That's for certain. Um, we're going to be making a warrior. I don't know what race. You can leave your suggestions in the comment section below. I'm thinking either troll, goblin, or orc. I'm kind of split right now. I w am really leaning towards troll or orc. Uh, just because I don't like the little bastards in the game. I really don't like the gnomes and the goblins just seem like a race like that. Even though their racial ability, the rocket boots, would be quite interesting. Because you can have heroic leaf, rocket boost, and... Uh, you know, some interceptor charge, depending on what you use. So there we go. We just ding level 82 in the Serifra's Roost. Or Sethria's Roost. Man, I'm terrible at pronouncing names. <laughs> but anyway, uh, another questing area for the Molten Front, once you unlock the Regrowth. Uh, and that's it. We're done to High Jaw. We're moving through. There's Thrall. And uh, this is the entrance to Deep Home, one of the zones in the Cataclysm. And what you have to do in your major city is talk to a, uh, a person there around all your portals. And he'll send you to the maelstrom. You talk to Thrall and uh, Agra, or uh, whatever her name is, uh, <laughs> Agra. She'll send you down through this giant red beam of doom, uh, which is the world pillar. Uh, and it gets shattered whenever Deathwing flies through. And uh, the whole questing area in De Deep Home is just surrounding these world pillars. And you have to align yourselves with the factions uh, and try to gain every single world pillar back so you can put the world shard back together and mend the rift between the two worlds. Because if you don't, in the end, Deep Home and Azeroth will collide and that's it. We'll just all die. <laughs> so it's quite serious when it comes to, you know, the lore wise. Uh, so if you want to complete that, you can. Uh, a couple of them, I think one of them was actually uh, on this gunship the alliance gunship shot down the horde one it was a mistake it was a setup by the twilight highlands that drops one of the uh the world shards or one of the world pillars uh whatever her name is uh <laughs> the big stone queen uh you may not see her in this video i'm having short for words right now she has a pillar you have to work with her and you have to convince her that you guys are just there to mend it and of course you're going to need some trust because deathwing came from azeroth destroying the world pillars so these guys are probably pissed off at you guys there we go we just ding level 83 i actually missed the ding we're doing throne of tides uh with a couple of my buddies nemec and uh fobs and a few others uh, from the guild uh thank you all for doing some runs with us and uh yeah we ding level 83 and we're going to be doing some of the uh vortex pinnacle right now we had a very terrible tank in this instance if you look closely at the party chat you'll see some of what's going on uh, basically, he's not cutting these dragons correctly, and even in normal mode, this can be very, you know, aggravating because you just can't kill the dragons when he's in the green circle. So what happened was the shadow priest ended up pulling uh, the dragon before the tank could even get to him, so we can actually drag him out of the green circle uh, to kill him. Because before we we're yelling at him in chat, like, "Come on, man, you need to pull that guy out. You need to do this," and he was just standing there, not doing anything. And uh, that was very, very aggravating, and it, he actually ended up uh, rage quitting. Um, I don't know why, he just kind of left on us, and we actually ended up getting a good tank, which was fun, allowing us to end the instance. Um, now this Drake, uh, he's very easy to kill, basically you just have to be uh, upwind to him, and you get this massive haste buff. Uh, and this haste buff works for basically everything. I love doing it on my Hunter, because you can get some crazy uh, aim shots on this... Uh, on my Warlock, I was using Drain Life for some reason. I should have been using Shadow Bolt. Um, because in dungeons, you're supposed to be putting your afflict or Unstable Affliction, Corruption, uh, Curse of Agony, or Bane of Agony, Haunt. And uh, you're supposed to be using Shadow Bolt. Now, uh, the stream told me that. So I started to use Shadow Bolt a little bit more in dungeons and life, uh, Drain Life out of it. Because it's been nerfed a bit. Uh, but that being done, we got Vortex Pinnacle all done and over with. And we're moving into Aldum. Uh, one of my favorite zones in the game, but uh, as of lately, I haven't really been enjoying it too much. Just because I've done it a lot before. And, I don't know. I just don't know what it is about Aldum that I don't really like. Um, because I, I love Teneris. Teneris is an awesome looking zone. The quests there are pretty fun. I just don't understand the deal with Aldum. I just have something in my head that I just don't like. Maybe it's these Harrison Jones quests. 
uh, because Harrison Jones, uh, it will take you through three temples. I, I think it's like moon, sun, and stars where you have to do certain challenges. And uh, once you unlock all three temples, something happens. I actually never completed all of them, so I don't know. Um, but uh, something happens and Harrison Jones is there, blah, 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 blah. Uh, there's also um, a Nazi reference, <laughs> a Hitler reference in all of them, which is a massive quest chains. Lots of cinematics, uh, lots of things going on. Little games like, you know, catapulting fiery balls, uh, you know, sending lions off to kill hyenas. A lot of fun RTS games that are in Aldum's quest lines, which is actually probably strategic because when you ever get to Aldum, you're probably a little bit burnt out from leveling because you did high jaw and deep home. You're probably like, oh, I just want to get level 85. And that was the whole goal here. I was just focusing on hitting level 85 at this particular point. So it was just quick, 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 let's go through and uh, start doing this. Now right now you're going to be noticing something different with my UI. Uh, I have Dougie's Guide 5. Uh, this was a beta but it's actually currently out now and I suggest you guys go pick it up because it's amazing. You have a model viewer that is going to be, it can be used anywhere in the world. It doesn't matter where you are, whenever you start a quest, it will show you what that model looks like. Uh, now here's a little easter egg I'm going to cut in here, Sirius the Black, if you guys are Harry Potter fans, Sirius Black. <laughs> so anyways, I'm going to move on and talk about Dougie's Guide again. Uh, Dougie's Guide 5 has been revamped, a lot of new features, there's going to be a video on my personal channel discussing them all, so you're going to want to check out that because it's pretty freaking sweet. An awesome tool to have, even though it's a paid for add-on, it's definitely worth it guys, because it, it makes the game a lot more enjoyable for me anyways. So there we go, we just did level 84, uh, just before a RTS minigame, which I didn't complete. I did it on Zuvo and I did it on Procunus, but I actually didn't do it on Mephisto. And that's just because it's unnecessary. My strategy is basically, you know, hit 82 in High Jaw, 83 in Aldum, 84 in, or sorry, 83 in Deep Home, 84 in Aldum, and 85 in Twilight Highlands. So we're actually leaving Aldum, and we're going to be going to the Twilight Highlands. Now this is the intro to Twilight Highlands for the Horde, which is epic. So if you haven't already seen it, click this annotation on this screen, and you'll see the full thing uncut. It's really freaking sweet, guys. So if you haven't already seen it, please do. Deathwing's in it. All these blimps get destroyed. Garrosh's blimp goes down. A lot of awesome lore. Make sure you check it out. This is another really fun quest where you have to kill these high bank marksmen. Ah, voice crack, but high bank marksmen. Man, this chain gun is so fun to use. And for anybody who is looking for some fun quests to do and haven't done that one, I recommend doing it. Now, Twilight Highlands is going to take up at least six hours of your freaking time. All right. It took me about four or five and a half hours to actually hit level 85. So that just goes to show how long it actually takes. Um, it's a big grind, and we did this all in one day. Uh, it actually took a long, long time, and you know what? We'll just go through it. Uh, I'm showing you guys the best quests, in my opinion, that I've done, the most unique, like being consumed by Nightmare. You guys have seen that on Procunus, so I'm not going to show that to you. Um, actually doing the whole fight sequence with Deathwing and the Queen, the Dragon, the Queen of the Dragons. Uh, that's a fun quest chain. So if you guys haven't done that, it's basically you do this one massive sky fight where it's the Queen and the Red Dragon Flight versus Twilight's Dragon Flight. Pretty cool. You guys think he killed Deathwing, but he's like, no bitch, I'm still alive. And uh, there he is. <laughs> Anyways guys, if you made it this far in this video, you deserve a medal. We're going back to the roots just like the first video. Make sure you leave it in the comment section. I want to know how many people actually watch this all the way through. And tell me if you watched every single one of them as well. If you're taking the time to actually you know, write a comment, also give me a big thumbs up guys. This is the end of the series. So uh, let's try to give this as much likes as possible. I would love to try to beat my 2300 like rating or like record. That's uh, one of the videos back at level 30 to 40 that has that record, which is pretty awesome, but I would love to beat it for this video. So right now, we are just doing some of the, uh, killing some of these Twilight Org Ogres. Blech. We're almost done. We're very, very close. I know it's happening very soon. Turning in these quests, I'm like, am I going to get it? Am I going to get it? Complete? No. Didn't get it. I'm very close. Only a couple kills away. We have to meet up with this, uh, this commander. And we have to storm this hill, I guess. And Cho Gaff is there. And, uh, or Cho Gall, sorry. He's there. 
he's chilling. He's chilling like a villain. We hit level 85 there as well. So it's very interesting, a lot of fun. And right now, everyone was on the edge of their seats. They're like, when is this going to happen? When is Deadly going to hit level 85? And I'm thinking that too. I was really excited. And uh, you know what? It, it's, it's pretty fun. And I can't believe it's over, guys. It's been a long run. Um, it's happened over about a month and uh, of a five week span and uh, the play time was three days 20 hours which is uh, a lot uh, you know about 11 hours uh, shorter than Percunus because of the BOAs um, but uh, depending what we do for our next series if we're doing it lore master or like PvP and leveling we'll see how fast we can do it next time um, if we're doing the lore master model we're not going to be hitting it too quickly so there we go we're going after Cho'Gall and bam, level 85 in the Korkon invasion, and he kills all my buddies but me. Perfectly acceptable for this case, I don't really care. I'm like, you know what, screw this, I'm out, peace. So is he. He's like, you know what, he level 85, we're not going to kill him. And there we go, guys. Three days, 20 hours, 26 minutes. Thank you guys for watching. You guys have been epic. I can't believe how amazing you guys have been to me for this whole series. Stay tuned to my personal channel. Stay tuned to TGN, because I'll upload a update video in the next coming days and stay tuned for the 1 through 85 Mephisto montage video it's coming guys thank you guys for being so epic you all deserve a medal you're all damn legendary and uh, thank you for answering all my questions and doing the least secret messages through this entire series my name is Deadly Slob and I'll see you guys next video